This episode of the Rogue Deck Builder is brought to you by CoolStuffInc.com, the number one source for games and gaming accessories, and by GatheringMagic.com, the number one source for Magic the Gathering news and articles. Hi there, it's Ken with GatheringMagic.com and RogueDeckBuilder.com here with another match with the Rogue Deck Builder. This week we're running the Volatile Reckoner list. Yes, we'd like to play first. Uh, this hand's fine. No, I'm not going to mulligan. we got to get for Immortality, Volta Rig, War Leaders, Helix. Definitely okay with that. So what I'm going to do is start off with... I'm going to start off with just a Sacred Foundry or, or Godless Shrine. And we don't know... Like, I don't have enough information for what I want to scry for yet. So we'll keep this Temple of Triumph to scry for something. All right, so another red-white deck. This is a lot of those. <laughs> Seems like it's the flavor of the week here on MTGO. Um... It's a pretty straightforward deck, either the mono white with splash red or the red, uh, the the red devotion deck, and it's very consistent. I think that's why people like it. So now we have double scry. I think right now, now we have four lands, so I I don't want any more lands. So we'll, we'll get rid of all the lands off the top from now on. So this will go to the bottom. And I'm hoping an Ash Zealot doesn't come out. Or Burning Tremissary. Into Burning Tremissary. Into Burning Tremissary. That's the, the worst case scenario. Okay, Ash Zealot. Of course. Uh, so I'm going to take two here. Volta Rigs actually aren't the best in this match. Because they end up just killing me. Another World Leader Shelix is awesome though. Uh, so we're gonna Temple of Silence. I'm basically gonna keep anything off the top here, unless it's like a trading post or a, a I don't even know what else. But next turn we got a Sacred Fan. We we have the Sacred Foundry for War Leaders Helix. I'm actually gonna put that on top because I don't want to take two damage next turn. I think five lands is fine. So no Hammer of Perforos, that's the, or actually no Shrine of Nyx into Burning Tramissary into Shrine of Nyx into Fanatic Amogus, that's always, this deck can just do some silly, silly, silly things. Again, uh, I highly, highly, highly recommend a deck that can break up Devotion. So Mono Black is the best Devotion deck that's also anti-Devotion strategy because they have so many ways to break this Devotion up. And I just don't see how this deck beats Mono Black. I, someone correct me if they if they know this matchup well. I just I I don't know. I don't know how it how it uh, can beat a Mono Black's ability to gain life. And maybe it's just the act. Of, maybe the act of treasons in the side. I'm not sure. Anyway, what I'm going to do right now, I'm going to break up the devotion right off the bat. I don't think Volta Rig is the way to go. I think it's just take out this Ash Zealot or the Frostburn Weird. We'll take out the uh, we'll take out the weird. I think the weird's a little more powerful. Break that devotion up. Use it right now before he can do any shenanigans with with Shrine of Nyx. We have another War Leader's Helix to gain us some more life and kill a creature. So yeah, I forgot about this. I mean, even War Leader's Helix is in... I have so much removal, that's why I wasn't so worried about running even more ultimate prices and stuff. But it seems like these heavy creature decks that are running 28, 29 creatures, it's the way to go. It's just tons and tons of removal. See, there was the Shrine of Nyx, so I'm glad I did that play. Because we can still go Burning Tremissary into Chant of Pyromancer, Master, okay. That is going to be difficult to deal with. Main board at Chander, that's... Okay, never mind, that's not going to be difficult to deal with. We will... That was an expensive one damage. Still in good shape. We've broken up two of the major outlets for Nykthos Shrine to Nyx. Wish they'd give us something better anti against this card besides the encroaching way. So no black does have contaminated grounds. All right, so he's going to add four here. Just keeps on coming. And there's a hammer Perforos. All right, so kind of bad shape. Do we go Volta Rig? Here's the thing. I 
I think we will go Voltor Rig. See how it performs. Again, everyone has to read this card. It's pretty hilarious. And I'm thinking we're going to be okay. This wipes his board. I'm worried about this hammer Perforos again. This card is just wrecking me. Every matchup that I'm I'm facing, this this card does extra extra work against me. So let's see what happens. We have to win a coin flip. That's that's basically what it comes down to. So he's gonna start sacking some stuff with hammer, right? It's the way to go. All right, let's come on, work, 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 work. Okay, let's win the the coin. All right, let's lose the coin, lose it. Oh, balls. Okay, so we <laughs> we lose the we lose the coin flip. Darn. Oh well. He's gonna pump, pump, pump. All right, he's gonna sack a land actually, and so <laughs> the game came down to a coin flip basically. I can still sack a land, so he's still going to sack a, a, a mountain here. Oh, Jesus. <laughs> okay. He's still going to sacrifice a land here. <laughs> All right. If, if, if anything can say God hand, that, that, <laughs> that was sure it. This, this card is so degenerate. I, I cannot stand like those Shrine of Nyx. It's too powerful not to go a strategy like that. And we get another land. All right, so I don't think I can do anything here to get us out of this. We will concede the game, and hopefully I can draw some removal this game, some some more removal. And we're going to go to a heavy removal pack package. So the Doom Blades, the ultimate prices, and everything come in. Where Terror is going to come in, because I do think he does run Chain of the Rocks. Blood Baron Viscopa, interesting card. He is running Mizian Mortars. So I don't know if that's the, the right way to go, but it is more lifelink. And I think that the Volto regs are going to come out. And if that's the case, I'm going to take out Angel Accord, Bulb and Cauldron, Trading Post. We're going to go down to a few less of these. Needle can actually... Needle doesn't do enough work in this matchup to justify bringing in. I think a Bulb and Cauldron is better than... No, Bulb and Cauldrons are very, very weak now. But I, I kind of like the combo. I'm going to bring back in the Angel Accord as I do think that it's going to be key for us winning this matchup. So submit this way. Yes, I'd like to play first. Um, this is a not quite a keepable hand. I'm going to be risky here and keep it and hope to draw into something I can actually use. But I won't, I won't Sacred Foundry. Again, I'm going to start off with a Sacred Foundry, and I'm going to use the Temple of Triumph to scry later on because we need to. we don't really need to hit a land drop quite yet. So he keeps his 7. We're going to go ahead and Sacred Foundry. And depending on what we, we have next turn, we'll scry or not. So best case scenario is we draw into a Swamp. Just naturally draw into a Two of Swamp here. Temple Science is good, and I'm actually going to use it now instead. That was a perfect draw. And I think I will put this on the bottom. I don't think we need any more lands. So very good. We have the we have the high priest of penance next turn. No ash zealot. Of course he has an ash zealot. They always do. Every game has an ash zealot. Um, so our high priest of penance is gonna have to come out. I'm gonna I'm gonna scry again. Get rid of uh. That's gonna definitely go on the top. And there's high priest of penance. So Chain of the Rock, that's awesome because I can tear in response. And let's hope he actually brings out a, a, a let's hope he actually brings out a hammer before us and I can two for one him. But we do need to draw into one of our finishing combos, which would be Angelic Accord. Or one of those. I'm trying to think that I'm starting to think that just Assemble the Legion is just overall better than the Angelic Accords, but we'll wait and see. 
It just seems like a, a, a pretty slow card uh, to try to utilize with the four mana casting cost. I, if it was three, and maybe three would have been overpowered, a little too overpowered, but you could go Angel of Accord into, into a... Um, well, I guess that wouldn't matter that much. I was thinking Trading Post into... would work better, but anyway... We should be in good shape. I am down to a 16 already. And another chain of the rocks. <laughs> Pretty annoying. Well, how do we want to do this? I'm going to tear a chain of the rocks, block, and kill the other chain of the rocks. All right, sweet. So there we go. Get rid of those. And I do believe I'm going to put out a trading post here. And we'll take two life because it, if nothing else, it gets us a a critter. And the whip, hopefully the whip will get us back in. We need an opposite. We need, oh, again, we need one of our finishers. And I'm, I, have a, I have a horrible feeling it's a dragon. Yeah, it is. But we can Heroes Downfall that. That is fine. Ugh. So I can use this actually to discard it to gain four life. I think that's a little bit better than actually just playing a land. So... Yep, I'm just going to keep it up. He can't Storm Breath Dragon. Well, he, he actually could if he, he draws a Shrine. We have the hero's downfall. That should should set him back quite a bit. No artifacts in the graveyard yet, so our goat isn't the greatest. But we can discard this godless shrine to gain four life. And he's got a wear, really? Huh. All right, well, that uses his... See, when he goes this control route, I, I don't agree with how he did this. I mean, he went kind of the mono black. Yeah. Man, if he would have saved that, he would have just blown me out with a, a whip of Erebos. So I'm glad that he actually used it right now. Jeez, I'm getting land flooded again. Story of my life. All right, so we'll whip here. And hopefully get out of Obsidot. See where he's at. He's getting land flooded as well. So it's pretty even on that. I mean, we've used same cards, though. Burning Tremissary. Don't care about that at all at this point. I got to feel like I am drawing more powerful than him, though. There we go. That'll do it. Both Chain of the Rocks are, are gone as well. And I don't think there's much he can. Ooh, do I have to worry about a chain for the rocks? All right, I'm gonna exile him. I am gonna worry about the fourth and fifth chain, or third and fourth chain of the rocks. And that is what. Don't know why he would waste a Mizium Mortars. 
on a high priest of penance so I can kill his Ash Zealot. That makes zero sense whatsoever. Is that just that's basically him just conceding the game there? Because that's that's a Blood Baron that it can that it can kill. And there's a Reckoner. I don't care about a Reckoner at all. So we'll attack in here with the Opsidot. And he'll block the Reckoner, but we can always just whip it back in. I'm gonna kill the Opsidot, okay. And this should work, right? The Opsidot combo, whoops, only as a sorcery. So I need to put this on the bottom. So this goes like that. There we go. So this will exile him before the, yeah. So now he's going to come back. All right. So that's how you stack the Whip of Erebos. Make sure you put the, the Whip trigger on the bottom and then the opposite on the top. And now this should come back in. Yeah. All right. Anyway, so it doesn't show us to come back. But we have the War Leader's Helix anyways. So what is not good? I'm not liking these trading posts. I think they're just too clunky, too, too slow. Especially now that he's got the wear and tears. But I got it. I have to give him a... I'm going to keep in... Jeez, Thoughtseize just seems like a better card, actually. Thoughtseize can get rid of uh, some problematic cards. We'll bring in the Thoughtseizes. I mean, Thoughtseizing, if nothing else, you get like a dragon out of his hand, you're saving yourself four life. If you get his Perforos, I don't think they use Perforos, but they're Hammer Perforos, you're saving life. Fanatic Amogus, you're saving life. It doesn't matter anyway, because we don't have an opening hand, but this is a great hand. We can go Temple of Silence into High Priest of Penance. Uh, no, we'd not like Mulligan. See if you've got a Cackler. I don't think they play Cacklers anymore in this. I think they start at two and go from there. Temple of Silence. We can scry away anything. We'll keep... I'm going to keep that. I think it's fine. Next turn we have a, a High Priest of Penance that will come out. See if Ashes for the third game in a row. Ugh, this card. Okay, so down to 18 again. See if he's got the Chain of the Rocks again for it. But, I mean, this is a very similar match that last last game had. I do need a red source very, very badly. Good news is I can thought he's away a threat. So, if he's got the Burning Tree, this is going to be very annoying if it's a Burning Tree, not a Burning Tree. It's going to allow me to thought seize. This is great. We'll go like this and this. And Fanatic, Museum Mortars, Boros Reckoner. <laughs> None of the above really care about. I guess Fanatic Amogus? We'll get rid of the Fanatic Amogus. So we have the War Leaders Helix for the Boros Reckoner. He can actually add... Dose Boros? No, just one Boros Reckoner here. If he drew into a dragon this this turn, I'd be very upset. Yeah, so he's going to want to attack first. And this is going to be awesome if he attacks. Oh, wow, this is great. So I can absorb all the damage here. So I'm going to declare block like this. It first strikes it off. Before the damage goes on, we kill the Frostburn Weird. So I take nothing there. I'd still rather do that than Nash sell it. So now he can just cast a regular Boros Reckoner, and I'm, I'm definitely cool with that, especially since I have the World Leader's Helix, but it's another High Priest of Penance that can just come out here. And we get a Reckoner of our own. We cannot cast it quite yet because I am a king at drawing these two swamps. Uh, but the other High Priest is going to be very difficult for him to deal with. And if he does have the Chain for the Rocks, 
Uh, if he did happen to draw into that, we we have an answer for it. So these are just roadblocks. It's crazy how good they are. And he's going to go for it. Reckoner's definitely going to die here. And is he going to give his guy? He didn't give his guy first strike, so that's awesome. He still hasn't. No, he does not have the opportunity to. So we're going to kill a Boris Reckoner. Again, take no damage. Uh, Boris Reckoner number two is probably going to come out. Which we have the War Leader's Helix for. Or a Reckoner of our own, depending on what we draw. Um, yeah, I think I just take take care of his devotion right now before he can actually activate it. So we're definitely even, man. These double, what is with me drawing double whips as well? Down to two cards in hand. I have no clue what he has in his hand. There's another War Leader's Helix. I think I'm going to go ahead and bait out a whip in case he's got a wear tear. Unfortunately, I can only use this during my turn, right? That's how it works. Um, that's actually an awesome card. But we need more mana to activate, and we can just keep it up. Because what I can do when I have six mana is I can activate, bring back a high priest, freakish cure my own high priest. But I think I'll just kill his Ash Zealot here. I'm definitely okay with that. I don't know why. Maybe cures need to come out because the only thing I think I can kill, I can kill Moguses. Why didn't he attack? Is there something in my... Oh, Celestial Flare. He's worried about a flare? Send a Legion I could care less about because we just tear it. And... Let's draw into a land. We'll do that. We'll put, do a trading post. That will hopefully give us some card advantage. And he just he just scoops. The game wasn't even close to over. All right. Well, we do it, drew a land then an Obsidot. Then it would be over. He probably got frustrated because he drew another land. Um, but yeah, we had we had every answer in the entire world for that deck, which is awesome. Um, this has been Kevin with GatheringMagic and RogueDeckBuilder.com. Thanks for watching.